Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to Saturday School. I'm Deacon Lorenzo Coleman of the Christmas Mall Church under the very wonderful leadership of our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Derek Randolph Sr. And as always, got the man who puts it all together, Brian H. Waters. Our lesson today, we're going again, going into two disciples. It's going to be with Matthews and Thomas. And as I said, these are not long uh, biographies. It's just what they call a synopsis. And we're very happy about that. There's some things you might not have known or what you need to know or want to know about the disciples who followed Jesus, who Jesus picked. We're going to start off with prayer. Gracious God, we just thank you for another opportunity, another day. God, we thank you for our lying down last night and our getting up this morning. Thank you so much for your goodness and your mercy, Father, in the name of Jesus. And the first one is Matthews, whose name was Levi. Levi, the son of Alphaeus, and he was from Capraman. Of course, we know Matthew's job was a tax collector in Galilee. You find that Matthew 9, 9th chapter, 9th verse, NIV says, as Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Jesus said, follow me. And he told him, and Matthew got up and followed him. Now, Matthew must have saw something in Jesus, and Jesus saw something in him for him to give up his job and follow Jesus. You see, the name Matthew derives from the Hebrew word meaning gift of God. And it also says Matthew had a nice house, a good income, but he gave it all up to follow Jesus. Matthew's ninth chapter, 10th verse, and Luke, fifth chapter, 29th verse, gave it all up to follow Jesus. Are we, what are we willing to give up to follow Christ? And, that, and that's a good question. What are we willing to give up? Well, some of us, most of us Christians, have gave up our old lives to follow Christ. Our old lives, our old things we used to do, we were born again. Matthews was sent out on a mission to preach to the Jews that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And he was told to heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead and cast out demons. And that's in Matthew's 10th chapter, 5th to the 8th verse. Now the book of Matthew's, which Matthew's wrote, tells of the good news that the long-awaited Messiah had come to save people, both Jews, Gentiles. Remember this, both Jews, Gentiles. Matthew's, the author of this book, it was probably written sometime before the Romans destroyed the temple in Jerusalem, 70 AD. And let me go back to when he said that he wrote about the good news that the long awaited Messiah had come for to save people, both Jews and Gentiles. No, it says save people. So I want to, a lot of people out there know that Jesus did not only come to save the Jews and Gentiles, he came to save black folks, Chinese. Asian Americans, Native Americans. So for anybody walking around thinking Christ just came just to save them, then, let's, then, then you are wrong. It's probably, you know, uh, although Mark and Luke wrote about Jesus' life, Matthew's gospel has some special things that are different from the others. And my brothers and sisters, if you read the gospel of Mark, and if you read the Gospel of Luke, you'll find that Matthew's Gospel is just a little different. Matthew's went with Christ. Remember, he walked with Christ. He ate with Christ. He traveled with Christ. Matthew's uses much of the Gospel to show that Jesus is the promised Messiah of the Old Testament and often used the phrase, the kingdom of heaven from the Old Testament frequently. He used that frequently. Because of this, many people think he was writing his gospel to the Jewish people. Matthew also presents Christ as the great teacher who helps us understand God's law. 
and tell the people about the kingdom of God and what it is. Most of Christ's teachings are found in the following places. Number one, the Sermon on the Mount. Fifth chapter, Matthew's fifth chapter, first to the seventh verse. Instructions to the disciples. Matthew's tenth chapter, fifth verse to the forty-second. And teaching through parables, the meaning of discipleship teaching about the end of time and the coming of the kingdom of heaven. These are the the five things that can be found in the scripture. The Sermon on the Mount, instruction to the disciples, teaching through parables, which is in chapter 13, and the third chapter, and it goes on more up to the 52nd verse, and then the meaning of discipleship, Matthew's 18, First chapter, 35th verse. And teaching about the kingdom of the coming of the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 24, the fourth verse, 25th verse, and the 46th verse. Let me repeat these verses again. The Sermon on the Mount. Fifth chapter of Matthew's first verse, seventh verse, and the 27th verse. And he would talk about the instructions to the disciples, which would be found in the 10th verse of Matthews, I mean, 10th chapter, 5th verse, and the 42nd verse. Teaching through parables, which can be found in Matthews, the 13th chapter, the 3rd verse, and the 52nd verse. And the meaning of discipleship, Matthews, 18th chapter, 1st verse, and the 35th verse and teaching about the end of time and the coming of the kingdom of heaven. All this is found in the book of Matthews. This is why Matthew's uh, uh, scripture book is different from Mark and Luke. And of course, Matthews went on to do great things also as Jesus taught the disciples to do. Our next one is Thomas. And he went, Thomas, whose name was Didymus, which means twin, doubting Thomas. Everybody knows, have heard that. It seems from his name that the apostle Thomas was a twin. The name Thomas and Didymus comes from the word for twin in Arabic and in Greek languages. Thomas was a straightforward person who expressed his feelings openly. The first occurred when Jesus, after leaving Judah to escape the Jews' attempt to kill him and decided to return, the disciples feared the dangers ahead and tried to dissuade him. To dissuade him. When Jesus made it clear that he was determined to go, Thomas showed his courage and by suggesting that they go with him so that they die with him. And that's in John 10th chapter, 39th verse. It says, again, they tried to seize him, but he escaped their grasp. And in John 11, the 7th verse, the 8th verse and the 16th verse says, then he said to his disciples, but Rabbi, they said a short while ago that the Jews tried to stone you, and yet you are going back there. This is Thomas telling Jesus, they said they're going to stone you, and yet you want to go back there. Verse 16 says, Psalmist called out, called Didius, said to the rest of the disciples, let us also go, that we may die with him. Thomas tried to persuade Jesus not to go back because the Jews were going to stone him, and they wanted to kill him. The second incident occurred as the time drew near for Jesus to return to the Father. He reminded his disciples that they knew where he was going. But Thomas with bluntness required that they did not. Thomas doubted Jesus' resurrection, saying that he would have to touch his wounds in order to believe. Now, when Thomas blunted, Jesus said where he was going, Thomas said that they don't. He do, they don't know where he's going. And you find that in John 14th chapter, 1 to the fifth verse. 
You know, then again, we know about the doubting. Thomas said, let me see the wounds of your hand. Then affirmed that the Lord Jesus was God. Thomas traveled to India and founded the Christian church in India. Some suggest that Thomas was killed by a spear for his faith and was buried in India. These are some of the things that these disciples did. These are some of the things that they did even after Jesus had left. And like I said, that Thomas went to India, they said, and uh, some suggested that he started the Christian church down in India. So again, these are, these are the works and the biographies, small biographies of those who travel with Jesus. Those who travel with Jesus. We thank you. We hope you have a good week, a blessed week. God will take care of you.